Uh, welcome to Lincoln House. I'm Armando Carbonell. I chair the Department of Planning and Urban Forum here at the Lincoln Institute of Land Policy. And uh, I see some familiar faces and some new ones, but uh, welcome to our Lincoln Lecture Series. Uh, we are very pleased, as always, to, uh, to bring uh, one of our uh, colleagues, uh, in this case Jay Espy, who is a Kingsbury Brown uh, Fellow, uh, to share what he's been working on with uh, a group of our friends from the uh, from the region. I don't know, has anybody come in from outside the region? But, uh, well, well, what do you consider the region? Okay. Well, that's a very good question. <laughs> well, where did you come from? Vermont. Well, come on, that's the region. <laughs> New England, you know. New, I mean, Jay had to come down from Maine, so. Oh, that's New England, too. Yeah. Which reminds me of, uh, we, we had a program at the Federal Reserve Bank a couple of years ago. We're going to have another one tomorrow. And, uh, I think it was Russ who pointed out that uh, we had Poland Springs uh, bottled water. And I said, well, Poland Springs, at least it's from New England. And it was not satisfying to Russ, I recall, getting a long letter from him about that. But, uh, but good to see you, Russ. And, uh, so let me, uh, let me introduce Jay and mention a couple of things about the Institute and its connection to land conservation uh, in New England and in the United States and in the world. Uh, the reason we have a Kingsbury Brown Fellowship is that Kingsbury Brown, who was a Boston lawyer uh, and leader in land conservation, was a fellow at the Lincoln Institute on leave from his uh, law firm. Uh, and out of his fellowship and his work uh, came uh, the Land Trust Exchange and ultimately the Land Trust Alliance. So uh, going back to the beginning in terms of this particular movement, uh, we've had, uh, had a role and we're very proud of it and the Brown uh, Award and Fellowship, which are, are given jointly by the Institute and Land Trust Alliance, uh, recognize leaders in the field of land conservation. We've been doing it for several years and hope to continue to do it. And the fellowship involves uh, an activity on the part of one of these distinguished conservationists that could include research or mentorship or otherwise uh, contributing based on their experience and their knowledge uh, to the field. And Jay, who I should tell you I've, uh, I've known through a Lincoln Institute activity that goes back maybe 20 years or more, uh, something called the uh, uh, Land Conservation in New England something, leadership something, study group. Study group on land conservation in New England. Uh, I used to come up from Cape Cod to the old uh, uh, Lincoln House on Trowbridge Street, and, uh, and we would uh, meet with folks from around the region. Uh, and uh, I'm very pleased that uh, you know we're still in that business and still able to do this. So I've, I've known Jay since he was uh, with the Maine Coast Heritage Trust, where he was notably successful in raising money and saving islands, uh, and, uh, and also as a leader of Land Trust Alliance, chairman of the board, uh, and now on the Canadian Land Trust Alliance, uh, and in his current role uh, as executive director of the Elmina B. Sewell Foundation, uh, now a, a grant-making philanthropist. And he's going to talk to us about the connection between what he knows about land conservation and his current role uh, as a philanthropist and the role of foundations in uh, advancing uh, land conservation uh, in the United States. So uh, looking forward to this. Uh, Jay's going to talk for a while, then we'll have some interaction, uh, and enjoy your lunch as well. Thanks very much. Thank you, Armando. Yeah, I think it was about 25 years ago, yeah, actually, right, that yeah. that got started. And I think it really was uh, uh, one of King's uh, brainchilds, sure. as a matter of fact. Yeah. Um, I've only been in this room one other time, as I remember. And I think I'm right, Jim, but the time that I was here, um, you had invited E.O. Wilson to come and speak to a group of us. And he was talking about uh, the, the work he was doing to inventory catalog all life on Earth. Uh, big thoughts were happening in this room, and I was kind of blown away. Uh, I hope you will, will uh, uh, allow me not to quite be qu as grandiose as that today. Um, and I have to say, Armando, I, I, you know, most of my career was, has been in land conservation. I've been now in the, f in the foundation world for just under four years. So a lot of what I'm going to talk about still is influenced by my knowledge of conservation. Uh, and growing knowledge around philanthropy. But um, as you mentioned, uh, with the Kingsbury Brown Award um, that I received and the fellowship that I received, I began thinking, what, what can I do in terms of research and, and adding some knowledge um, to the field of conservation uh, that would draw on 
my background in conservation, and then this interest and growing knowledge in, in, in philanthropy. And, you know, one of the things I learned uh, from uh, foundation people in the past was a saying that if you know one foundation, you know one foundation. <laughs> and uh, that has proven to be true. Um, but what, what I also knew is that I could not do this work uh, of researching this topic alone. And so I um, engaged a, a young woman named Gina Schrader, who is a, was and has recently now graduated from the Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies. So much of the research that's been done, um, not so much for this talk, but for a paper that I know the Lincoln Institute will be putting out, uh, has, is, has been her work interviewing foundations and land conservation practitioners around the Northeast. We focused on the Northeast, although I think a lot of what she learned applies uh, nationwide. So today I'm not going to really go through that research per se, but draw out one uh, trend or theme that I think I believe is perhaps the most important theme uh, with regard to where conservation might be going in the future. And so I'm going to focus on that today. And I think to, to to be able to do this properly, I need to take you back a little bit and talk a, a little bit about the history of conservation, at least my fractured understanding of the history of conservation in the United States. And I see three major eras that we have been through in the United States in the conservation realm. Really in the late 1800s, early 1900s, was a period of the establishment of the national park system the national forest system. A lot of public money and time and effort was put into securing lands that are public lands, the White Mountain National Forest, Acadia National Park, Yosemite, Yellowstone, all of those were done in that era. And that, and, and, and as I should say, there's one exception, notable exception, and since I'm Mass in Massachusetts, I need to mention it. But the uh, Trustees of Reservations here in Massachusetts is actually the oldest conservation organization in the world. Not just in this country, but in the world. And I think it was 1891 when it was established. Um, and the Society for the Protection of New Hampshire Forests in 1900 or 1901 is the second oldest. Uh, and so there was, a, there was some private conservation going on. But private conservation really got started in the mid-50s through the through today but it really had its heyday i would say in the 19 late 1970s through the early 1900 1990s <coughs> and that was the boom of the land trust movement um, the nature conservancy was one of the earliest uh, private not-for-profit conservation organizations in the country and then we began and, and there were others that were large scale uh, of, of that nature that got started but it really was in the 70s and 80s when we saw private citizens taking action to conserve lands that they felt were important in their region or in their community. And that, the, the ground zero for that was New England. Uh, Massachusetts, I think, has more land trusts than any other state in the Union. Uh, Maine, with 100, has the highest percentage uh, or highest per capita rate of land trusts in the nation. And of course, that whole movement has spread, but it really emanated from this region. Um, then in the, the third era I'll speak of, I, I call landscape scale conservation. And many of you may know that there have been some very large landscape scale land conservation projects done, really beginning in the 1990s. And this was the era in which primarily what happened is paper companies, Wall Street recognized that paper companies had huge holdings of land that were undervalued on their books. And so there was pressure by those companies, timber industry, to divest itself of these lands that were not uh, realizing the, the, the asset value that they had. Primarily what was happening was people were recognizing these were timber lands that had always been managed for timber and had been valued as if they were only timber lands. They had extensive shore frontage on lakes, rivers, some on the ocean, and clearly the value of the waterfront land was much higher than the timber value. 